Hey, um, welcome to 214. My name is Noni. I'll be your lecturer for this session. Now, everyone's got a course outline. All right. So what we're going to do today is um, two things. We're going to, in the first hour, we're going to go through the course outline. It's going to be a bit of a reading exercise, so I'll be seeing here reading the stuff for you, just talking about it a bit. And then uh, we're going to start talking about the material in the second hour. I think we're okay. Um, outline? Just there. All right. Now, at any point while um, I'm going through the course outline, please free, feel free to stop me um, if you have any questions. Um, I'm happy to talk about uh, whatever. Where's my pen? There we go. About whatever um, is here, if it's not clear. Um, at the end of the course, when the feedback time comes, there's going to be a question. Was everything clear in the first lecture? Were you aware of all the information? I, I, keep, I still keep getting students saying, no, we didn't know everything. So, you know, pay attention. Everything is right here. All right. So, um, first of all, as I said, my name is Noni. Um, I'll be your lecturer. That's under the course staff. There's also another person, Tara. She's the academic in charge. She's more, um, she'll take care of admin stuff for you if you need um, any help, any course admin. She probably won't um, show her face too much here. Maybe um, she'll come and lecture one and two lectures. Maybe she'll show up in tutorials every once in a while. Um, but if you do need her um, for any administrative stuff or any other questions, if you're not happy with me, um, she sits in room 207. My name is Noni. I'll be, again, I'll be your lecturer and your tutor for the session. I sit in um, room 209. My email address is just there, noni at UNSW. Um, feel free to email me about any issues. Um, those latecomers, there's course outlines here at the front if you want them. <laughs> no attention whatsoever. Um, I'm happy to answer emails. I usually am um, pretty good with emails. I answer pretty quickly. Um, if you forget my email address and you're really um, keen to email, um, I also um, get emails sent to um, elect 214 at UNSW, so either or um, you'll get to me. Other than, other than me and Tara, this is going to be your um, lab demonstrators. Uh, we've got six of them. Um, their names are here with their email addresses. You'll know that depending on what lab class you're in, um, you'll get a couple of them. We've got the best demonstrators in electrical engineering, guaranteed. Um, all those people, um, the lab demonstrators, very smart people, very caring, very patient, very eager to help. Um, so I'm, I feel very lucky to work with them. I think you'll enjoy um, doing the labs with them as well. Um, consultation times, there's really no formal consultation times uh, with me. You can just drop in um, to the office anytime you want. I mean, let's face it, whenever I um, assign consultation times, everyone comes any time aside from the consultation time, so there's no point. If I'm in my office and I'm not too busy, um, drop in. If you want to make sure that I am in my office, just shoot me an email before you come so I'll know that you're coming and I'll allocate some time. Um, however, um, if you have any questions that are um, course related, you might want to try your luck on the course webpage on Moodle um, or on the Facebook um, page, and yes, there is a Facebook page, we'll talk about it in a second. Um, all of our demonstrators, myself and Tara, are reading all the forms on Moodle and Facebook. We'll be happy to help, as well as other um, classmates that maybe know the answer and uh, want to c contribute some stuff. Um, all right, course details. This is a six units of credit course, so you expect it to um, dedicate between 10 to 12 hours a week um, during the session. So we've got, what, three hours lecture, one hour tutorial, two hours lab, that's already six hours. Another four to six hours for solving tutorial um, questions, preparing for the lab, and solving quizzes. Um, so that's fair enough estimate. Um, the contact hours, as you're probably aware from your timetables, we've got three hours of lectures e each week. We've got two hours today and another hour on Friday. Um, I'm sorry, by the way, the air condition is not working. I tried, so apologies. 
Um, one of our tutorials and two hours of lab session each week. Now you've got um, you've got the timetable for all the tutorials in the labs. Can I please ask you to only come to your designated um, enroll time? As I said, this is a very full class. We are at um, capacity. We're actually one over capacity. Um, all the labs are full. All the tutorials are full. The rooms can, um, can't hold any more people, um, and we're not allowed to for oh s reasons. Um, if you do want to come and there's a spare seat, you are welcome, although there's always be a priority for those people who are enrolled in the classes. I do ask you to come to your designated time. I know a lot of people um, wanted to change their labs. As I said, the labs are full. We can't quite swap you around. Um, but if you really want, um, you can email me. And if I get enough emails from people um, that want to change together, um, or that I realize that we can change them together, I'm happy to do so. Uh, but I will not over-enroll classes, just so you're aware of this. Um, last time I checked, by the way, this, um, just before I came here, I think there's a spare slot in the Wednesday morning labs and two spare slots in the Wednesday afternoon labs. You can still change. Please finalize your enrollments by Friday because <coughs> on Friday I will take a snapshot of all the enrollments um, and this is what we'll use for our roles for um, the labs. Does Eric, hey, hey, course handouts. <coughs> just there. Um, hello? Uh, it's funny, the latecomers, when I, when I talk, they never pay attention to what I say. They're like, doo, doo, doo. always. Um, tutorials and, and labs come in. <laughs> oh, good. I'll let you sit down. There's this handouts at the front. Are there not? Are there none there anymore? There's a big sign in front of you. Are there none left? No. Oh. Seriously, with errors and eliminated and everything. Dude. Right. Um, OK, so that's, that's about um, the schedule. Um, OK, the course schedule, what are we going to do throughout the, um, the session? Uh, you have a table of the topics. I'll uh, very quickly go through them. So today we're going to start talking about number systems. Um, specifically, we'll concentrate on um, binary number systems. In weeks two and three, uh, we'll learn about combinational logic circuits. So we'll introduce um, some basic elements for logic design, logic gates. Um, and we'll talk about Boolean arithmetic and how we can manipulate those um, equations and how do we build circuits. In week four, we'll talk about combinational logic design. So what we learn in weeks two and three will now come into practice. Uh, we'll start designing things. And I will introduce you to some um, basic building blocks for logic design. In week five, we'll start talking about sequential um, circuits. Sequential circuits are uh, digital circuits that have uh, memory elements in them. So in week five, we will see how we build a memory element. And then in weeks um, six and seven, uh, we will actually use those memory elements we picked in um, week five and start designing our own circuits and analyzing them. Week eight is the one week that everyone dreads, very log HDL. Um, hello. Over here. Um, there's handouts at the front, those of you. Um, HDL stands for Hardware Description Language. Um, it's pretty much programming. Um, and yes, we will learn some hardware programming in this course. Now, um, as week eight, by the way, is just before the mid-session break and we're losing the Friday lecture. Yeah, that sign should be up there. It sort of fell. Yeah. Um, because we will lose the Friday lecture on week eight, we will probably move it, um, the first lecture, to week seven. Don't worry about it too much now. I'll concentrate more on that when we get there. Uh, week nine, after the mid-session break, uh, we'll start talking about arithmetic circuits, which will be sort of the building blocks to week 10, which is the computer design fundamentals. We'll talk about um, how do we actually build a computer. So all those computers that you use at home, what's inside them, how do they work, you know, to very elementary level, but it should give you um, some idea of what's going on. Um, 
Weeks 10, no, weeks 11 and 12, I'm not actually going to be here. I'll be overseas. Uh, so week 11, there's going to be a guest lecturer from the industry. Uh, we'll give you a bit of a taste of what, um, where this course is going, uh, why are you here, what sort of stuff you will do after you graduate if you find this interesting. Um, and then week 12, we'll talk about CMOS technology. That's how do we actually design um, circuits using transistors. Now, um, I don't know, did you learn anything about transistors just yet? Maybe, maybe not. Um, well, transistors are evil. Um, it's not fun to work with them. In this course, we won't go too much into details, so um, not too much to worry about. I'll leave that to other courses to torture you. All right, resources for students. Um, some of you might have gotten the email this morning about the Moodle page. So um, we're not actually running Blackboard um, this session. I think a lot of your other courses run on Blackboards usually. I ran the course on Blackboard last year and I was burned. It's, it was such a bad experience um, and I swore never to go back to Blackboard as well. I mean, with all the obvious downfalls it's got, it actually screwed up the marks for the students, which um, wasn't very nice that students failed because of a bug in Blackboard, not because they didn't do well. So none of that. Um, we will run the Moodle um, version that's run on the Faculty of Engineering. The university actually has its own Moodle version. We're running the faculty version. You've got the URL on the course outline. Um, you should have gotten an email from me this morning um, that came out from the Moodle with the link as well. Um, and if you just can't find your way there, um, just let me know. In the Moodle webpage, in fact, let me um, load it up so we can see what it looks like. Come on. Um, Moodle.eng, well, there's the address. Um, it's not as pretty as Blackboard, but, yeah. Let's just pretend I'm a student. The first thing you'll notice, it's very wood-like. Um, the wood has nothing to do with the course. It just was the least worst theme in Moodle that I could find. Any other theme was horrible, so wood theme it is. Um, but that aside, if you look at what's actually available for you in Moodle, um, the whole course resources are going to be in one page here. I'm not going to um, overpopulate this page. It should be fairly easy to navigate. Um, at the top, you've got the announcements. So any announcement that I make um, should appear there. You can also see them under the latest news. You will also propagate there. And by default, you should also get an email with all the announcements. If you, get, if you find it extremely annoying, you can opt out from getting emails every time I say something. Um, I won't be mad if you do. Um, there's a link to the course outline, which is a soft copy of uh, what you're holding in your hand. There's a link to the Facebook page, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, now, lecture notes. Um, I don't know how many of you actually printed the lecture notes before you came here. Um, they're available in two versions. The, the main one is the colorful um, screen version that you can look on your screen. But if you try to print it, then um, you can probably print two weeks' worth of lecture notes before you, buy, you have to buy new ink. So there's a black and white version um, under the print version. So Obviously, that's the recommended one to print. And this will be for every uh, week of lectures. I will usually publish the lecture notes on uh, Monday morning, probably Monday 9 a.m. as a rule, um, which should give you about a day and a half to print them if you want to. Um, and by the way, I'll talk about how lectures are going to go. Um, tutorials, um, there's one PDF file with the tutorial booklet, which is this. Um, I didn't print one for all of you because I don't have enough money, but um, it's all combined in one PDF. Um, I recommend that you just take it, print it once at the beginning of session, probably later today, and then just have it in your bag every time you come to a tute. Um, it's very convenient like that, and you know, I even made you a nice front page. Um, so please do that. Um, lab material, um, there's a lab manual the whole lab menu, menu um, which is this one, so it's a soft copy of it. Um, I'll talk about the lab manual in a second. Um, 
this is actually a non-printable version of the lab manual. Um, it's only for screen reading. Um, you will have to get your own um, printed, proper binded um, lab manual. But you've got um, all the data sheets and anything that um, if you want to print them. Uh, but there are actually appendices in this version of the lab manual. Um, other than that, there's the discussion forums. Um, you know, if you have questions, you want to discuss something, um, this is where it goes. Should be pretty easy to navigate. Um, other interesting things in Moodle, so there's the navigation bar here that will um, show you um, all the things that I just went through. Uh, the forums, you can actually set um, different settings. You can subscribe to a forum that every time a message goes up, you get an email. Why would you want to do this? I don't know. Um, participants, you can see your fellow students. Um, messages, you can actually message internally um, through Moodle. Don't think anyone will, but you can. Um, and then there's the profile here. Now, in the profile, I actually got last year in the feedback. Someone said, very sexy picture. So, so I thought I'll keep it. Um, you can um, set a whole lot of stuff. If you don't like the way Moodle uh, treats you, uh, go for it. You can set whatever you want. Um, I encourage you, hello, handouts over there. What's that? Yeah, it is. Grab one. What is it? <laughs> I encourage you to upload um, a picture, because um, that way when you write in the discussion form, or if someone looks you up, they know who you are. Um, if you want. And then if you're really keen, put a list of interest, um, other stuff, and update profile. Um, other stuff, this is something I just couldn't remove, so you know, you have to see the UNSW rules. Latest news, if I put any announcement, it will be there. And recent activity, if I actually update anything on this page, um, you will see it here. So you can always keep track of what's been updated in the course. Um, yep, that's Moodle. Any questions so far? Yeah. yeah? We'll get there when we talk about tutorial. Okay? We've got plenty of pages to go through. Um, all right, in addition, there's going to be a Facebook page for this course. Um, you can access in this URL or you can come up um, here. Um, and this is what it looks like for now. Um, 37 people like it that found it one way or another. Maybe they downloaded the course um, outline. Uh, there was a um, few people actually found it as soon as I put it up. I don't know why you go to Facebook and look for Elect 2141, but you know, go for it. Um, now, the idea of this Facebook platform um, is to have a bit of a more, well, less formal um, place for discussions, for announcements, uh, for anything that might be interesting but not directly related to the course. Um, you can subscribe to this page uh, from your Facebook account um, by clicking like and that way if I actually put an announcement on here it will uh, be fed into your news feed. Um, all announcements I will put up on Moodle I'll put up here as well. Um, so that's a bit of an alternative if you, you know, if you spend your life on Facebook, then um, I will chase you over there. Um, you don't have to, by the way. Um, the Facebook page is in addition to the course. It's by no means mandatory. You will do just fine in the course even if you don't follow the Facebook page. But it's nice. I actually, um, a couple of years ago when I was um, chasing up um, material for this course, I ran into this professor that ran the same course from the States and um, he ran the entire course on Facebook and back then I thought, oh my god, no way, you don't run a course on Facebook. It's university, you don't do it. Two years later, look at me. Um, no, but I'm not actually running the course on Facebook, just a bit of a, you know, an add-on. Um, as I said, all of your um, tutors are going to be there, all, um, all your lab demonstrators, if you have any questions. If you have any interesting links you want to share with the class, go for it. Um, videos, if you just want to chat uh, for whatever reason. I won't moderate this page too much. You can go off topic. You can talk about whatever you want. Um, just be polite. Right? Don't, you know, 
Don't be rude to each other. These are your friends. Um, just another thing. Um, if anybody writes on the Facebook page um, the word your, when they really mean you are, you immediately fail the course. All right? <laughs> and being expelled from the university. I don't want to see that. Um, all right, that's about the Facebook page. Okay, other resources. Prescribed textbook for this course is this one, um, Logic and Computer Design Fundamentals, fourth edition. Um, it's available at the, books, um, at the bookshop if you want to buy it. Now, the lectures will follow this book very, very closely. Um, a lot of the lecture material is taken from this book. Um, in the lecture notes, there will be references to where you can find everything in the book. Um, so if you don't understand something from the lectures, um, just head there and um, there's quite an um, extensive explanation to it um, over there. Um, if you don't want to buy the book, there's plenty of copies in the library. Um, there's actually um, copies in Open Reserve or my course or whatever they call it these days. They change the name every year. Um, but um, you can't take it out. You can photocopy or look in the library. You know how it works. Um, although I do recommend you buy this because, um, first of all, having textbooks at home is always good. Um, and it's also a good reference for um, 2142, which you will probably do um, next session. It's not, it's not going to be used in 2142, so don't say that I misled you later. Uh, but there are important concepts in this book that might help you understand 2142 uh, better. Up to you if you like buying textbook, textbooks. Other than this one, there's other um, very good textbooks that are listed in the course outline. Um, each one of them covers pretty much the same material um, in different styles. Um, so if you don't like the style of this book, um, try looking at the other books. You might prefer their style Excuse me, more. Um, all the other books are in open reserve as well. Um, I wouldn't buy the other ones, not for this course anyway. They are excellent books though. Um, all right, course information, context. Uh, let me read it out loud. Digital system is an integral part of many areas of engineering technology, such as personal computers, digital signal processing, telecommunication, speech analysis and recognition, and control systems. What it's saying is pretty much you'll see it everywhere. Um, in fact, you have a mobile phone that's a digital system, well, a computer is a digital system. Pretty much any electronics, almost any electronics that you have is a digital system. Um, so this course is obviously um, very good for you. Uh, where are we? Uh, da, da, da. At the completion of the course, students should be in a position to be able to design and build reliable and cost-effective digital systems, such as your mobile phone. Maybe. Aims of this course, uh, it aims to provide students with fundamental knowledge of digital system with respect to several different levels of abstraction. Um, so we'll start with, uh, well, we, we actually end with the low-level um, electrical circuits, so there will be digital systems in the transistor level um, and we'll see how we actually build them physically but then uh, we will get there uh, through a bit of a higher level um, layers so we'll talk about logic gates um, and the highest level we'll go to will be uh, very log HDL which is pretty much programming for hardware so you program something that will become a physical circuit later we'll see it coming um, and you will hate it um, relation to other courses. So um, this is a second year course. Um, if you're doing um, bachelors of um, electrical or telecommunications in the school, um, I know we've got students from other um, disciplines as well. We've got a few comp students. Some of you are doing combined degrees. Um, some of you um, are doing exchange here with us. Um, are there any first year students here? Just one, two, three, four, okay. Um, in that case, I won't tell you what first year students can get away with. Um, quite a bit, actually. But luckily, you're a second year student, so you can't get away with much. Um, the prerequisite for this course is ELECT 1111, which hopefully you've all done. 
Um, if you have an, not a huge problem, uh, what we expect you to, to know from ELEC 1111 um, are basic things, um, you know, like voltage, current equations, not into details, uh, how transistors work, so what are capacitors, um, sort of analog stuff in a way. Um, you, you will use this mostly in the lab. Um, from here, but other than that, by the way, um, this course assumes you know absolutely nothing and we will start from the very beginning. Um, so in that case, it's pretty really good. <coughs> from here, the next, um, this is a prerequisite for ELEC 2142, Embedded System Design, which most of you will probably do uh, next session, probably with me as well. Um, embedded System Designs, by the way, um, is when we actually take microcontrollers and program them and then build cool stuff with them. Um, in this course, we will learn what's inside a microcontroller. So this is when I said computer design fundamentals. Um, this is leading to 2142. Other than that, there will be, it's a prerequisite for 3106 electronics, uh, which is where you learn more about um, transistor level design of, of um, CMOS and other um, transistor technologies to build um, digital devices. As I said in this course, we won't concentrate too much on the transistor level. Um, I'll give you um, a bit of an introduction to it. Uh, 3106 will um, finish the job for me. Learning outcomes. Um, at the end of this subject, successful completion of this subject, students should be able to design and analyze combination circuits. Combination circuits are um, very easy circuits, no memory elements. You put an input into your circuit, you get an output um, straight away. That's a combination circuit. Display basic understanding of standard digital circuit elements such as multiplexers, decoders, and other stuff. This is what we'll do in week four. Um, few building blocks of um, a lot of the digital circuits out there, so you should be familiar with them. Design and optimize simple synchronous um, sequential circuits. That's when we start introducing memory elements. Um, this is where things get a little bit trickier. There's um, memory elements by definition have um, circuit feedback, feedbacks in them. Um, it's not as easy as combinational, but nevertheless very interesting. Uh, understand the fundamentals of the um, central processing unit in a computer. Talked about it. Demonstrate knowledge in practical aspects of digital circuits and system and the use in more complex systems. Um, so part of the things you'll do in the lab, and um, I will talk about it a lot in, um, during the tutes, is how those things actually relate to the real world. Why? I mean, obviously this course will teach you the basics, but you know, you build up on the basics. How does your knowledge in this course um, integrate into real world applications? So from what you know here, how you end up with a mobile phone. Obviously you want to design a mobile phone at the end of this course, but you will know where you fit in and what you can do. Um, demonstrate understanding of various hardware realization of the basic digital elements. Um, that's the circuit level that I was talking about, transistors. Demonstrate basic skills in working in computer aided design tools, including knowing the rudiments of hardware description language. Uh, we will do a lot of this in the lab. Um, you will work with computer software and you will design um, digital circuits um, on a computer. Um, so you will learn all this. And implement simple designs at various levels from discrete components to programmable logic devices. Again, it's going to be um, what you'll do in the lab. We'll start off the labs with, you know, taking chips, putting them on the breadboard, and getting things to work, and then we'll build it up to more complex devices. Graduate attributes. How many of you actually know what graduate attributes are in relation to Unis W? Not many. I didn't know as a student what they were. Apparently, UNSW wants us to um, knock some sense into you that's not uh, related necessarily to the course. So when you graduate um, your degree, um, you'll have all these attributes. Now, each course is required to add a few of your, those attributes, and then the university claims that by the end of your degree, you would have obtained all those attributes. So um, my little contribution to your um, Graduation, uh, graduate attributes are going to be the information um, literacy, um, so you know how to look for information. It's called Google. Um, your address is in tutorial question and lab task. The ability to engage in independent reflective learning, um, which is what you do in the labs. And if you watch the 
Um, video lectures, well, that's pretty independent because you won't be here. Um, so that's a skill. Um, the capacity for enterprise initiative and creativity, which is addressed by design and implementation assignment. Um, you will have to get very creative in the assignment. This will be fun. Uh, the capacity for analytical and critical thinking, uh, which is addressed by tutorial questions and quizzes. Now, in the tutorials, I will keep emphasizing that you um, have to be um, um, critical when you answer those questions. I will emphasize that you shouldn't doubt yourself if you, um, if you have some idea of how to go about something, go for it. Chances are that it's right. If not, you'll learn about it soon enough. Um, never hesitate to um, stop me and tell me that I'm wrong because sometimes I'm intentionally wrong to check your attention. Um, but pretty much be critical with your thinking. And I think this is um, actually one of the better attributes you get, not necessarily from this course, but from this degree. Um, engineers um, have very critical thinking. Um, they can th see things a little bit, I would say more realistically than a lot of other people. Um, I claim it's a good attribute to have. Syllabus, there's a whole lot of buzzwords. I'm not going to read them. Anybody who wants to read it really, really, really fast? No? Didn't think so. You can read it yourself. That's what you're going to read. Uh, that's what you're going to do in this course. All of it. Teaching, teaching strategies. How am I going to go about teaching you all the stuff that I said I'm going to teach you? Well, there's a few components into this course. We'll start with the lectures. Uh, they form the core of the subject. Um, what we're going to do, we're um, usually talk about the theory of every new material that we learn and we'll um, complement with a lot of exercises. Um, now the way, the way I teach this course um, is first of all, you probably saw, I've got this um, tablet PC here. I'm going to give you the complete lecture notes online. What I'll have here on the screen are lecture notes, are stripped down lecture notes that um, I'm going to build up all the stuff that, we, uh, that I want to present to you. Um, there'll be a lot of blank spaces and I will fill them up as we go along. Um, because I hate it when um, lecturers go, yeah, here's this, this, and this, all clear, let's move on. Um, so none of this. We will build it up slowly. Um, hopefully you'll see how things come about. Um, the good thing is, in theory, you shouldn't take any notes. All the stuff that I will write on here will already be in your version of the lecture notes. Um, because I like you to pay attention more to what I'm doing here than to sit with your head in, um, in the slide, in, in the paper, and just write everything I write. Some people find that um, this helps them to study. If you want to do this, no problem. Go for it. Um, but you don't have to. Um, as you saw before in Moodle, there's the color versions um, and there's the black and white versions. You, can, you should probably print the black and white versions. Um, I said I'm going to put the lecture notes usually on Monday mornings. Um, a couple of other things about um, lectures. I'm a bit of a um, quiet Nazi. Um, when people start talking while I'm talking, it really interrupts me, but more than it interrupts me, it interrupts people around you. Now, as you can see, we have a full class. No matter where you sit, if you start talking to your friend, um, people um, will hear you around you. And they will probably hate you for this, but they will probably not say anything because everyone's passive like this. Um, so please um, don't talk during lectures. If you don't want to be here, if you think it's too easy, you don't have to come. I'm not taking role. Um, I won't be offended if you don't show up. Everything's video lecture. You can watch it later. If you're here, do me a favor. Be quiet. Um, I really don't want to shush you, OK? Then I will, and, and you will talk, and I know how it's going to be. Also, another thing, um, please don't bring um, food to lectures. I mean, food is a bit of a broad one. If you have a sandwich at the back, I don't mind too much. But if you um, just came from the pasta shop and you open up your pasta right here in front of me, uh, that's a bit rude. Please don't do it. Um, I think this lecture is past lunchtime, so you should have your lunch beforehand. As I said, if you, if you want to have a sandwich at the back, it's fine. 
Um, the other thing um, I'm not a big fan of is people bringing the laptops into lectures. Um, not, not that I'm very much against it, but uh, what usually happens, people bring the laptops and they probably sit at the front right here, and then they play games, and everyone at the back look into their screen <laughs> and looking at me. Um, so, I mean, look, if you want to bring your laptop, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, but either sit all the way at the back so people behind you don't get distracted, or um, put the actual lecture notes on. And no flipping back and forth to Facebook, okay? I mean, I'm not going to see what you're doing. Uh, just asking you very nicely not to do it. Um, right, with the recorded lectures, all the lectures will be recorded. Um, the idea is that once, when you, once we, um, we finish recording them, we encode them, and we send them, hopefully, to UNSW TV, to YouTube, and to iTunes. And you can pick your favorite service um, and stream it from there. Um, I know some people synchronize it with their iPhones. They watch it on the train on the way to the next lecture. Um, some people like YouTube. Now, um, I still need to figure out how the whole system works. UNSW TV promised that they do it all automatically for me. Um, experience that I had, it's not so true. Um, so we'll probably happen, this lecture will probably be published um, next week, hopefully, if everything uh, works out by the time I figure out how everything works. But once uh, we get the idea, um, it should be more regularly. Just keep in mind, by the way, that um, it does take time to encode videos. Three hours of videos, um, by the way, end up being about 40 gigs of files just for three hours um, one week. And we have to compress it. Um, my computer will suffocate with all the processing, but you know, it's very good cause. Tutorials. Um, as I said, this booklet is available to you online. Uh, please print it, bring it to all your tutorials with you. Um, the tutorial problems provide students with in-depth um, understanding of the topics covered. The idea is that after every week of lecture, the tutorial problems will address specifically what we've learned the previous week. So um, the tutorial questions for next week will cover what we've done today what we will do today, um, and this is how it's going to be. Um, there's going to be a couple of weeks with no tutorials. Um, you probably figured it out by looking at the tutorials. Yeah? Are tutorials compulsory? Um, no, but I highly recommend you come. Um, I'm, I don't take role in tutorials. If you don't want, want to show up, don't show up. Um, a lot of people think that they'll be all right without t tutorials. A lot of people, probably more than half the class. I could not recommend more against it. Um, I do recommend that you come to all the tutorials, if only for the reason that um, in tutorials I don't just go through the tutorial questions, I present some other stuff. Um, I teach you some tricks usually that um, how to solve things quicker and usually looking at the past um, two years those tricks uh, will be very much used in the final exam. Because um, you know I think we should um, credit people who actually make an attempt to come to tutorials and learn. Um, and it was actually very obvious to those who didn't show up, didn't quite make it through the questions that um, I showed in tutorials. Um, then again, you don't have to come. Um, I will post tutorial solutions online. At the end of the week, probably Thursday afternoons after the last tutorials is f tutorial is finished, um, fully worked solutions will be posted up. Um, so you'll have everything in front of you. Then again, probably not a reason not to come to Tutes because there's still more. I can only recommend it. Um, oh yeah, you're expected to attempt the tutorial questions before you come to the tutorial. The way the tutorials are going to work, I'm going to uh, come to the class and I say, hello class, good morning, um, what do you have problems with? And then you're going to raise your hand and you're going to say question two, three, four, and before we know it we cover all the questions. Um, we won't have time for this. Um, so the idea is that you actually try the tutorial questions before you come, and then those questions that you find really difficult, um, we will address in the tutorials. Um, you know, and it's time per meeting, and usually it's the first person who raises their hands, that's the person that, that's the first question that we do, and then slowly more people raise their hands, and then those people that raise their hands last don't get their tutorial questions answered, because we don't have time. Um, 
So don't be shy. Uh, raise your hand. Lab work. Um, any question about the tutes, by the way? <coughs> no. Um, lab work. All right. There's tons to say about. Oh, I hate this. Uh, tons to say about um, the lab, uh, during the lab sessions, students will be introduced to real life design. Yeah, the lab is similar to the tutes. Every lab will usually focus on um, material that we covered the previous week's, uh, week of lectures. Um, now, the way the labs work, we have sort of two main groups of labs. There's the labs that will be conducted on breadboards using uh, discrete components and there's the labs that will be done on a computer. Now before you come to your first lab next session these manuals are available from the bookshop. You must buy a manual before you come to the lab. The lab work is individual work. Um, every person gets a bench and they've got their own lab manual. Um, once you do, please write your student name and student number on the lab manual. And in, during your first lab, uh, we will give you a component pack. Um, so there's a little place for us to stamp that we give you a component pack. Um, so you bring your lab manual, uh, we give you a component pack, and this is what you work with um, throughout the semester. Um, please go and buy your lab manuals this week. The bookshop, the way they work, they don't actually order enough copies for everyone because they think, oh, not everyone will buy it. They don't know that I tell you that everyone's got to buy it. Um, and then they very quickly run out of. And then um, those people who try to buy it five minutes before the first lab, they go to the bookshop and the bookshop say, oh, we only have one in two days' time once we order some more. Um, and then they don't have one. You won't be allowed in the lab if you don't have your lab manual because you have nothing to do. You won't have your components. Uh, you won't have your material. We won't able to. You won't be able to mark you because we we do mark you inside your tutorial, uh, your lab manual. Please, 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 go and buy your lab manual today, this week, um, to leave enough time for um, the bookshop to order more if they need to. Is this a question? No. Okay. Um, the first lab is next week, what we call lab zero. Um, this is where you sort of start playing around with your breadboard and you set things up. Um, you should bring your own breadboard that you should probably have from ELEC 1111. Um, if you don't have a breadboard, you can buy one, I think, through the school office. Now, um, how do you know which labs use the, bre the breadboard, which ones use the computer? Well, you read ahead. When you prepare for your lab, you read ahead and if it's a computer exercise then you don't need to bother bring your breadboard. Um, if it's a discrete component, naturally you have to bring your breadboard. Now in lab zero we, we will actually put some components on the breadboard that will stay with you throughout the session. Um, so it's a good idea not to share this breadboard between more than one subject, although you know it's, it's wide enough if you do need to um, you can use sort of two sides of a breadboard um, so that's not a problem. Um, there will be a bonus lab at the end. Um, so we have in total um, 10 plus 1 labs, so it's 11 labs. Um, so it's 10 labs plus lab 0. Um, if you finish everything and you're keen to do some more work, there's going to be um, a bonus lab that you can do some extra, um, some extra exercises. Score some extra bonus marks if you want. Um, we'll talk about this. Question about the labs? No. Um, short quizzes. That's the fun part. Almost every week you will have an online quiz that you will have to attempt, um, which you will access through Moodle. Um, they will actually run on a third, sort of third party service um, that is here within UNSW. Um, but you will access them through Moodle, so that's not a problem. Um, each quiz, the, the idea behind those quizzes is that you keep track with the material of what's going on. You come to lectures, we'll learn about something today. Next week you have the quiz open for a whole week um, which will address this topic. That way um, I make sure you don't just come to lectures and then you know, sleep your way through it and then half an hour before the exam you try to cram everything. So it will force you to go through, um, through everything. Um, now the way those quizzes are going to work, 
um, they will be up on Moodle. They will open, I think it says here, every Tuesday um, 9 a.m. They do open every Tuesday 9 a.m., but, that, and that's a correction, they will close on Monday 9 a.m., the following Monday, not Tuesday. And this is very important, okay? So don't come later and say, oh, you know, you said Tuesday, but it closed too early. Um, so you will essentially run for six days. Yeah. <coughs> Yes, and this is why you have this, and this is why you have the plagiarism booklet, and I will talk about this. <laughs> the last thing now, wait, wait till we get to the last section on plagiarism. Yes, all the all the quiz questions are the same. Everyone's going to get the same exercises. Um, there's not going to be any time limits. Um, plenty of opportunity to you know scam your way and get um, some free marks. Please don't. Um, again, we'll talk about it in a second. Um, assignment, there's going to be there's going to be one design assignment um, due in week nine. Monet, it will be the same questions as last year's quizzes as well. So you know, all the opportunities are there. Um, well, roughly actually, we're going to change some stuff. Um, assignment um, due week nine. Uh, we will talk about the assignment more as we get closer. Uh, but it will pretty much be a design assignment. I'll give you some challenge um, that doesn't actually necessarily have one solution to it. You need to um, use your analytical and critical thinking and come up with the best solution you can. Um, this assignment will cover all the material that we will, we will have learned until um, um, the assignment. It will give you plenty of opportunity to actually go and be a little bit creative and come up with your own solution um, to the assignment. Now marking the assignment will be more based about how you go about doing this rather than the correct answer. Um, so the, there will be plenty of room to explain why you're doing um, what you're doing. And explanation such as because my friend did it, uh, will not disqualify your assignment, but will not give you many marks either. Um, assessments. So, so um, up until now we said how I'm going to you know, teach you this course. How are you going to be assessed? How are you going to um, get some marks? Um, the short quizzes. Um, so they make 10% of the overall mark. Uh, there will be 10 quizzes. Every quiz will contribute one mark. It doesn't worth your time to cheat. Um, those quizzes are there for you. Um, what the idea is that you attempt the quiz, you run into your question, you're not quite sure about how you go about doing this. You've got your textbook, your lecture no notes next to you, um, and then you can open it. Um, the quizzes are not timed, um, so the idea is that you learn as you go along and then you fill up the quizzes. Worst case, you don't know anything, you guess. A lot of them will be uh, multiple choice questions, although we're trying to introduce more and more um, adaptive quizzes. Uh, you'll see when we get there. It's not going to be the first quiz. Um, but there is a rule that you must attempt at least eight out of the ten quizzes. I did not say you have to pass eight out of the ten. You have to at least attempt them. Um, so open them. If you really don't feel like doing anything, just go guess everything as long as you attempt it. I, I have a feeling that once you open it, you will get sucked into it and you will actually learn. But maybe I'm just naive. Uh, no late attempts will be per permitted. Once the quiz is closed on Monday, that's it. We're not reopening the quiz. Please don't beg. Um, assignment will form another 10% of your assessment. I said what's going to be, is this a question? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry? Is the quiz going to be multiple choice or are you going to answer? Like um, some of them will be multiple choice. Um, a lot of them will be. Um, as I said, we're developing some sort of new technology of quizzes um, called adaptive quizzes. that are going to be more interactive. It's going to be flash based with nice graphics and you know all the um, cool things that people like. Um, but while we get there, um, we develop a few more every year. Um, it's not easy. Um, the rest of them will be multiple choice. The answer is the majority of them will be multiple choice or short answers. 
Um, is there a time limit on the quiz? I mean, once you start it, you finish like 20 minutes or something. All right. Anybody knows the answer to that? OK, just because I said it five times. So, you know, no time limit. OK. Um, so the assignment is another 10% of your mark. Um, we said about how we're going to mark you. Um, I will hopefully release the specs um, at the beginning of week seven, which will, should give you four weeks to work on your assignment, which is plenty of time. Don't forget you have the mid-session break in the middle between weeks eight and nine. Um, I do recommend, you know, it, it's a long time away. I cannot emphasize more start early because a lot of people start in the very last week before it's due, then they get stuck. It's not going to be straightforward. Um, well, unless you don't want to do very well. Um, you know, it's a bit of early days now, but I do recommend to start early. Um, lab work, so that's, uh, that's worth 20%. Um, you have to come to your labs. Um, well, you have to come to your lab slots. So don't not show up to your lab times, then show up to other lab times that happen to have a spare seat. Uh, because we try to even out the labs. Some people sneakingly try to over-enroll into the labs. Um, I don't appreciate when you trick the school office into doing this. Um, but I will, um, I did smooth out the classes. We have um, 18 students per lab um, and two demonstrators per lab. Um, everyone should be able to get um, help. If you show up to any other lab time, um, there's handouts over there. If you do um, show up to any other lab time, um, the demonstrators will only help you if there's absolutely nothing else for them to do. Otherwise, um, the students who are actually enrolled in the lab will um, get priority. The way the labs work, every, um, the labs are built so that um, every exercise should take you um, one week to complete. Um, each one, will, one of them will have one or two checkpoints um, in the middle. Um, most of them will have two checkpoints. Some of them will have one. Once you get to a checkpoint and you complete all the exercises and you know what you're doing, um, you go, there's going to be a lab cue sheet. You put your um, name there and then you wait for a demonstrator or an assessor to come and um, ask you some more questions. Um, we will tell you more about how the whole procedure works uh, when you show up to your first lab next week. Um, please don't forget to bring your lab manual. Um, there are absolutely no lab exemptions for um, this subject. Even if you are a repeating student, even if you've done very well in your labs last year, um, you still have to do the labs. Um, and I say it now because um, it's amazing. Just one second. I got gotcha. you. It's urgent, yeah? yeah? Okay. With the labs, yeah. what if there are outside circumstances that you can't make it to the lab? Um, come and talk to us. That's not a problem. I mean, no, we're not as tough as, you know, we, I'm, I'm trying to make it sound. Um, but just reasonable, right? I, want, I don't want to overflow the classes. Um, I do realize that there are classes that um, are more popular. Um, I can already see how Thursday, um, Thursday afternoon there's always going to be people come to, to come into that. Um, some of them are less popular. Um, I do want you to come to your lab um, time because um, we have to spread the load. Um, we had, to, to be completely honest, we did have problems with it in previous years. Um, when the labs were just too full, people were complaining they were waiting too long um, to get marked and they were wasting their time. Uh, we don't want to go there. We're trying to do our best to avoid it um, and this is why we sort of had to be strict about the number of people in the lab. Um, back to the no lab exemptions for the subject. Um, in previous years, true story, um, I get people that come at the very end of the session after they didn't turn up to any of the labs, um, lab sessions and they come and they say, can I please get a lab exemption because I've done it last year. Um, I had a student who came to me the day before marks were released to the students asking for a lab exemption. To which point, even if I wanted to, I couldn't because we submit your marks way before you actually get them. Um, you know, if you do have, if you want to beg for an exemption, um, you know, knock yourself out. I'm not going to give you one, but, you know, you can try. Um, 
but please come and talk to me like this week, not um, not before um, the session finishes. <coughs> um, there's going to be five percent bonus. Yes. Can okay, it's plagiarism? If you are doing the labs again. No. Um, plagiarism, um, very um, officially, you're not allowed to submit the same work twice to university, um, even to other universities, by the way. Um, by the way, true story, I had a student who was at Sydney Uni, no, not elect student, the student was um, submitted some assignment in um, Sydney Uni from some subject, then he transferred to UNSW, did a totally different subject, um, that had an assignment related to what he submitted there, so he just submitted the same thing. His own assignment, the world wanted that it was the same tutor that checked the assignment that transferred the same time from Sydney Uni to UNSW, um, who recognized the work and accused my friend of plagiarism. And it did not help at all that my friend claimed that this is his own work. It was a totally different subject. They happened to be the same topic. Um, yeah, and, and, and he really got into trouble for this, you know? Um, I won't get you into trouble if you're repeating the subject. Um, but the idea is that um, if you're repeating the subject, there's a, there's probably, it's probably a good idea to do the exercise again. I mean, those labs um, exercises are not there for nothing, so we enjoy see you coming to the nice air-conditioned rooms and, you know, sit there and chat with your friends. Um, the lab... Um, the lab sessions are going to be more casual. You can, uh, we don't mind if you come and you sit in proximity to your friend. Um, you can talk as long as you don't yell. You know, um, if you talk quietly, uh, you don't have to be completely quiet. It's it's very casual. Um, in a way, you you can work together. What you shouldn't do is not let your friend finish the thing, copy all of their files, and then uh, present the same work. So that's a big no-no. Um, if you know the benches are, I don't know if you've seen the lab. Um, We've got a couple of people, people sitting uh, in proximity. If you want to sit next to your friend, you want to chat a bit, that's fine. Um, yeah, bonus marks. Um, at the end, there's going to be 5% um, bonus lab if you want to attempt it. It will relate to, um, it will continue from the very last lab, from lab 10, uh, which is where you design um, the arithmetic logic unit of a processor. Um, and it will require um, a whole lot more work. If you get there, you're keen, you think you can do it, um, I will give you more information when we get there. Other questions? No? Right, trial exam, um, worth 60%, Eric still doesn't work. Um, worth 60%, um, obviously, it's a three, it's a three hours um, exam closed book. Uh, question will be very similar to what we do in tutorial, same style. We, um, I will give you a um, few past exam papers with the solutions when we get, once we get closer to the exam. You'll, you'll have a feel of what it looks like and what's the um, difficulty level. Um, now, this is pretty much everything about the course directly. Um, what I want to emphasize about this course, what we'll start learning today, number systems, in the first couple of weeks, weeks um, two and three, maybe things you may see, bef you may have seen before in either your high school, maybe in your computing subject, maybe you know it from prior knowledge. Um, and it might look very easy and you might say, oh yeah, this subject is a breeze. Um, you will get much more difficult than this as we go along. I know a lot of people um, come to the first few lectures think this is going to be so easy and then they sort of tune out maybe they stop, stop coming to lectures uh, maybe they do come and not pay any attention because they think oh yeah I'll pick it up it's so easy um, and then before you know it they think oh my god when did this all happen um, so I, I'm, I'm just making sure you're aware of this the first few weeks may or may not be easy for you um, not true I am starting from scratch so everyone's on the same um, level when we get there uh, but keep that in mind, that once we um, go further and further, there's going to be more work, the tutorials will get slightly um, harder, um, and naturally the material will get more interesting as well. All right. Um, and by the way, so, so will the labs. You'll, you will come to your first few labs, you'll think, oh yeah, I can finish this lab you know, in half an hour. Why do they even give us two hours? Um, and then as you go further into your um, lab exercises, you'll see that they take longer and longer time to finish. Um, speaking of the labs, I do recommend that you, uh, well, 
it's not even a recommendation. It's, it's pretty much do it. Um, that you read ahead of your lab exercise that you know uh, what you expected to do. You can answer some of the questions already without doing any practical work, so come prepared for your lab. All right, other matters, um, general things. Um, first of all, plagiarism. I did hand out those um, plagiarism um, brochures. I'm not going to read through it. Everybody here know, knows what plagiarism is, I hope. And, this, and these are the stuff you can get away with in first year, by the way. UNSW assumes that you don't know. Once you're in second year, UNSW knows um, that you know exactly what plagiarism is. For the matter of this course, um, plagiarism is any um, copying of work from anyone else or using anyone else's work for your own work or submitting anything by anyone else um, without acknowledgement and all the regular definitions of plagiarism. Plus, with the quizzes, yes, you will all get the same quizzes. No, you're not allowed to look at other people's quizzes when they attempt them before you attempt yours. You're not allowed to discuss it beforehand. You're not allowed to know what the questions are. Um, you can, but you know, physically you can I ask you not to, but because I make it so easy for you to plagiarize with the quizzes, um, I will put very heavy penalties on um, plagiarizing in the quizzes as well. If for some reason I find out that, um, you know, you did do your quiz after looking at someone else's quiz or getting some answers from someone else or discussing it with them, um, so if you find that you've done that, um, it is an immediate failure of the course. All right? Um, no questions asked. Because we make it so easy for you, therefore don't do it. We trust you not to do it. Let's not go there. Um, in the labs, um, if you copy and you submit someone else's work, we will give you zero for the lab components. We have no tolerance for plagiarism. Um, in the assignment, if you plagiarize, um, you will probably get negative marks. Um, so if the assignment is worth 10%, you plagiarize, you get minus 10 for the assignment. Um, however, we're not t totally um, insensible. Uh, things do happen. Obviously, you know, you discuss things in the lab with your friend. Um, when the assignment comes, you will discuss it with your friends. Um, as long as you acknowledge it, that's fine. If in doubt, acknowledge. If you work on your assignment. By the way, the assignments, you can do it in pairs, by the way. Um, if you do discuss it with other pair or with a friend and you do use something together, just write down. Me and that guy, uh, we discuss it and there, therefore our solutions are pretty similar. We're sensible like this um, and that's not a problem. It is a problem if you're trying to get away with plagiarism um, in its sort of ugliest form. Please don't do it. Um, and then one last thing, if you do plagiarize say, in the quizzes and I do find out about it and I do call you to my office and I do tell you, look, I'm going to give you zero for the course, please don't start crying, okay? It breaks my heart to see a student cries their eyes out. It has happened before. If you're going to do it, just stand up for what you've done, but don't do it. Uh, continue your course improvement. Um, we've been running this course in this form for a few years now and every year we're trying to improve it more and more. Um, if you have any comments either for me, um, how I can improve it or if you really enjoy it then, you know, tell me. If you have a complaint if I've not done you right and you don't want to talk to me about this, either go to Terra um, or you can talk to the um, school administration. Plenty of people to talk to. Um, we do like feedback, whether it's good or bad. Um, if you're not happy with something with the course, maybe we're not um, seeing it from the student's point of view, do come and tell us. We can improve. Um, we do listen to students, um, and we do know, uh, want to know about um, what your thoughts are. Any other administrative matters? Um, um, equity, diversity, occupational health and safety enrollments, and all um, that other stuff. Um, you can talk to other school office or um, the relevant areas at the university. You probably know where to find them. Um, all right, that's about that.